So uh, generally, when we talk about time and attention, you know, we, we, we use transactional words, right? Like we talk about we spend time. You look at the word spend time. It's a transactional word, spend time, right? Really, we're spending. We all, we all have a certain limited amount of time. Every time that we use, we're spending from that deposit that God has given to us. For some people, that deposit is 30 years. Some people, is 50 years. Some people, is 60 years. Some people, is 70 years. Some people, is whatever. But each time you're using it, you are spending from that that you have, right? So when you, you, when you use time, you're spending. You don't kill time. You spend time. You know, when you, when you while away your time, say you are killing time. What you're truly doing is you're spending time. You're spending from a limited time that you have. And what you spend, you cannot get back. You, you have lost it, right? And so it's whatever you buy, what you spend, that you also get, right? Because each time you spend is a transaction. You are getting something for the time you're spending. Is it making your life better or making your life not better? Again, also now in putting that against uh, what we spoke last Sunday, talking about your social universe, the way you spend your time will determine, you know, what is happening to all the relationships in your life, whether you are you're, you're making them more life-giving or less life-giving, whether you're working on the important relationships in your life or you're working on those ones that are not important to your life, whether you're working on the relationships that are moving you forward or the ones that are not moving you forward, right? It's a decision, not in its compulsory. Everything you do is a decision. You don't have to do anything. Anything you do is because you decided to do it, right? It's a decision. And because you decided to do it, you are responsible for it. Others will come. Like Jim Rohn would say, right? When the others comes, we all must be matured. Right, whatsoever you get in the harvest, you need to take it as a man, take it as a woman, because it's the result of all that you did, all the sowing that you did. Your harvest is your report card, right? If your harvest is good, it means you did well. If your harvest is bad, it means you did not do well. You need to find out what you did wrong so you can correct it and do better. If its harvest is good, you need to find out what you did so you can do more of it. Right. So when you look at 2023, how has 2023 been for you? Has it been a fruitful year? Has it been a rewarding year? Has it been a good year? Whatever that answer is, is your harvest. Right. And you need to take it maturely. It has nothing to do with the government. It has nothing to do with Nigeria. It has nothing to do with the exchange rate. It has nothing to do with your pastor. It has nothing to do with anybody. It has everything to do with you. Right, because you lived your life the way that brought about that result. You are the reason for the harvest that you have. If your harvest is good, then go do more of what you did. If your harvest is bad, go do less of what you did and find out the things you should do so you can have a better harvest that you'll be proud of, right? So we do spend time. But the other part to time is, which is, like a twin brother or twin sister to time is what we call attention. When we spend time, we are giving attention to something, but we pay attention by what we spend time on. What we spend time on, we are paying attention to that thing. What we pay attention to, we are spending time on, right? Those are transactional words. And they affect our life as a whole, but even in our social universe, they are they are they are they, are, they affect our social universe specifically, but they also affect our life as a whole. They affect us emotionally, physically, psychologically, and otherwise spiritually. Right? What we spend time on, what we pay attention to, determine what we become. They are determining who you, we are. They are determining what we are becoming, right? So we need to be careful about that, you know, as we uh build as we as we build our life, and we build our relationship as well, right? So 
Um, Oh, welcome, Abikhead. Thanks. Thanks for coming on an uh, Instagram live. You know, so when we talk about attention, we're talking about um, notice, not, the notice we give to someone or something or the regard we give to something or someone. Also, we're talking about uh, we what we watch, what we listen to, what we think about, you know. So those, those, that, those are the things we talk about when we pay attention. But when we pay attention, we're spending time. When we spend time, we're paying attention. And whatsoever it is that we're spending time on or paying attention to will affect our life. It will corrupt our life. It will not make our lives better or not, right? And it will influence our life. It will, will give power to what we spend time on and we'll pay attention to, right? So time and attention are, are something that, we cannot replenish. Again, we have only so much time, right? So what we do with the so much we have determines the end of our life, right? So when we do offer time and, and attention, we're giving our life. We're giving from who we are, right? What we, That which we give is what represents who we are, right? So... um. So attention is the, uh, Simeon Weed says that attention is the rarest and the purest form of generosity, right? And anybody in a relationship will know that, right? It's it, what we determine as love is the attention we get from our partner, right? You know, if you're matured, you will know that. If you're not matured, you think it's what you give. Right. Yeah, what you give helps. It might it might give an indication that that you have you're giving attention, but it's not whole. And you can easily be decified, right? Whether you're or you're trying to buy a fable, trying to buy a relationship, or you are investing into that relationship. If all you give is what you have, then all you're doing is you're trying to buy fable, you're trying to curry fable, you're trying to call by love, right? But you don't you don't you don't build a relationship by buying. You build a relationship by investing. And what you invest is yourself, not what you have, right? And, and when attention is is that which we get to invest to make a relationship better, you know. So Simeon Witt says that attention is the rarest and the purest form of generosity. That is what proves your love. It's not what you can buy. It's not what you can give. It's yourself. It's what you can give of yourself, of who you are, right? That makes a difference in the relationship that pretty much tells of where your heart, your person is, you know? That's why even in, even before God, God is going to say, hey, it's not just your offering. <laughs> you know, in Isaiah, God says, I'm tired of the offering. He smells in my, in, my, in my nose. Don't even bring your offering again. <laughs> Because they were not bringing their heart. They were not bringing their person. They were trying to quarry favor of God. But you see, God is a God of love. It's not going to take your, what you give if you cannot give yourself. You know? So uh, after, after the flood, Noah gave an offering. Right? But it, it, what God saw was not as much as the offering, but the person of Noah. That's what excited God. That's when he began to bless him. Same thing we saw in Solomon. Solomon showed his attention by the multitude of the sacrifice that he gave. What excited God was not necessarily the number, but the attention he gave. Again, that's what differentiates Abel from Cain. Cain just gave anything. Abel chose, he paid attention to the offering he was giving. And in his heart, he exalted the person he was giving it to. That's why his own offering was accepted. See, God Almighty <laughs> takes notice whether you're, you're paying attention to him or not. How much more your spouse? How much more your friend? How much more your children? How much more your siblings? How much more your associates? How much more your business partner? God puts a difference whether you're paying attention to him or not. And he doesn't sell to you his attention. You can only invest into it by giving him of your person. Same way he has created each of us. Your relationship is not going to be better by what you give. It's going to be better by the time you 
spent and the attention you pay to the person. That's what builds relationship. So if you're going to work in your social universe, you need to know which relationships you want to make better, you want to improve on. And you have to then invest that right so you can get the right result from it. Thanks, Adi, all for coming along. And I believe that's Sonny Eden. Thank you, sir. Great to see you. Uh, so, again, attention and time, they're the most valuable thing we possess, right? Sometimes we, 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 for the human soul, a human heart, that's the most valuable thing you possess. It's not your car, your riches, you know. Those are like ephemeral things, right? Temporal. What, so what goes deep to a person's heart is who you are. You are. You're being able to spend time with that person. You're calling that person. You're sending that person a note. You're selling that person you are there. You know, when someone is in pain, it's not as much as what you can give. You're just coming to sit down with that person and even say nothing, just to say, I am with you, right? That's what we created in the depth of our heart. Our soul is looking for partnership. Our, our soul is looking for someone to say, I see you. <laughs> I see you. Just how many how many people have wealth, but they, they don't have anybody to, to say that I see you. I know you exist. Uh, you, are, you are precious. You are dear to me, right? You make a difference for me. <laughs> that is worth the world to people. Just to know that someone knows they are there. You know, it was important to me that someone came and gave me a prophecy some years ago. For me, it felt special that God knows me by name, right? That's that's a heart of relationship. That's a heart of relationship. Don't forget what, what, what the summary of this book tells us that the way to get the best out of adult development is having the right relationships in our life and the quality of those relationships. So everything we're talking about here at the end of the day is talking about how to build relationship and maintain those relationships in such a way that it will affect our life positively. We can get the best result from leaving. We're not just going to exist, but we'll leave, we'll leave, we'll leave. Both the longitude of life and the width of the life is seasoned life, a life that we, we 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 are happy that we live. Not just that we are happy, but other people are also happy that we lead. People can give a true testimony about our life, not the fake one, not the crocodile tears. They can truly cry from the depth of their heart that we live. Right? It's not just the length of a life but also the weight of a life. We can get the benefit of this life. It's possible. And it doesn't matter where you find yourself. It's possible. This study has no limitation to location. Wherever you find yourself, you can live a good life, right? And it comes by you being able to create the right relationship and have the, 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 the right um, the, 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 the quality in that relationship as well. Right. And one of the things we, that, that the key things that we use to invest to get that is at the attention we give and the time we spend. Right. So John Tarrant says that attention is the most basic form of love. Right. If, if, if I love somebody, then I will give attention to that person. If I don't give attention to someone, I can't say I love the person. All I'm doing is mounting it. What I love, I give attention to. What I give attention to, I love. It's the same way God says. God says, yeah, yeah, don't tell me I love you. You love me. If you love me, you will obey my commandment. Because if you love me, you will attend to my word. You will attend to my person. So if you say you love your spouse and you don't spend time with your spouse, you don't culture your spouse, you don't nurse your spouse, you don't wait on your spouse, you're lying. You don't love her. You don't love him. Because love is shown by the attention we give. Parity is shown by the time we spend. Right? So if we want to maintain the quality of our relationship, then we want to mind that time. Was, I will spend our time and I will give our attention. Or I will pay our attention. Right? So just to continue along that same line. So time and attention are essential materials for happiness. Right? If you're going to be happy, you're, it will be determined by how you spend your time and what you pay attention to. Those two will affect you. Like I said, they're going to corrupt you. You know, what you spend your time on 
and what you pay attention to, you submit yourself to, because they're going to influence you. They're going to master you. And it is there's it's, there's nothing that forces you to spend your time. There's nothing that forces you to pay attention. Every time you spend, every attention you pay, it's a decision. You made a decision to do it. And therefore, you'll be responsible for it. You'll be responsible for the harvest you get. Now, if you like the harvest, great. Spend more time on it. Pay more attention to it. If you don't, then you need to make changes. You need to spend less time on it. You need to pay less attention to it because you're in control of your harvest, not God. God is not in control. God has given us the liberty to, to decide. We get the consequence of our decision. To change the consequence, we need to change our decision. Then we can get a different outcome based on the decision we'll make. It's impute output. That's the way God has made it. And God has sworn that that's the way the whole earth is going to run. Nothing's going to change it. It's a principle of God. It's a law of God. It's a, it's a, it's a landmark of God. It's not going to change. It's, got, it, it's worked yesterday. It's working today. It will always work. It's up to us to use it. Otherwise, it will use us. Right? So, a wonder mind is connected to unhappiness. If you don't have control of your mind, if you're not able to pay attention to the things you need to pay attention to, you're going to be mentally sick. You know what mental sickness is? You know, people people don't understand mental sickness. You know, if someone is mentally sick, you think it's when you just go out there, you're 100% mentally sick. No, uh -uh. Any duplication, your mental ability, mental agility is a, is a degree of mental sickness. Right, mental wholeness is a place where we're able to uh, respond at the level and frequency we we're created to, and this is the level and frequency we we're created to. Each time we see anything, every moment of our life, our mind goes and reflects to the history we have to compare what we are seeing at that point in time to our history, make an interpretation, and decide what to do. That is happening every second, every millisecond. Every millisecond, as I'm talking to you, my mind is racing, thinking about what I'm saying vis-a-vis -vis what I've said before, what I've read. That is taking place, right? It's at an incredible speed. My ability to use all of that data, all of that history, and be talking to you at the same time, is a level of my mental wholeness. Now, we see, when I'm not able to control my mind, when my mind is being oppressed, by depression, anxiety, my mind is torn all over the place. It reduces my mental, uh, my mental acumen. You right. It it, it 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 reduces my mental efficacy, and that is a degree of mental sickness. Right. It might not be. It just means that I'm not able to use my mind at its optimum position. Right. So my ability to be in control of my time, my attention helps my mental acumen. It helps me to be able to use my mind rightly, right? And helps my mental wholeness as well, right? So uh, Matthew Kingsword and Daniel Gibbett puts it this way. He says, the ability to think about what is not happening is a cognitive achievement that comes at an emotional cost, right? And, and pretty much tying all what I've said, you know, Part of what it was said in the book is this. It says that the amount of work we do today is less than what we've always done. However, people are more tired today than they've always been. And the reason is because of the degradation in our mind. Because our mind is being oppressed by depression, anxiety. Depression, not being able to forget something that we did wrong in the past. Anxiety of the future. Right, so our present is being burdened with the past and the future. We're 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 being we're limited in our ability to live in the present. Therefore, that burdens our mind and reduces our mental efficacy. Right, so our ability to separate all of this, you know, will 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 increase our effectiveness in our today right and our ability to spend time on the things we truly need to spend time on and and pay attention to the things we truly need to pay attention to so pretty much the things that distract us 
our time and our attention are pretty much distractions, right? And they bring an overstimulation to our mind. And in that sense, could interfere in our relationship, right? Because if I don't spend the time I should spend on the things that are priority to me, I don't pay attention to the things that are priority to me, I'm going to lose those relationships, right? The time will go, but I will not necessarily have made better the relationships in my life, right? So we need to work on uh, being able to take away the distractions so that we can focus on the things that are important.